I'm the boss lady. The Kelly yeah. Holland Show. Oh. Watch out, let's go. Always tight, talking just to get inside. Gospel talking, Bible walking, wanna help you see. Faith is calling, and she's walking with the victory. The king is on her side, and she never quits. Put you on the show, and you reminisce. Creative to the point where she's making hits. Business savvy is a Kelly. Are you kidding this? I'm like this. <laughs> Okay, thank you, everybody. This is the Kelly Hollis Show. Can you believe I have my own show? I'm so excited. And today we are interviewing the author of Rosalia, the Honduran American, the very beautiful Christine Osaria. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me today, Kelly. You are very, very welcome. Let us know, how did you come up with this book? And is this your very first? Yes, it's my first book. It's my first children's book, and it's not going to be my last. Um, I came up with this book, honestly. Um, I'm a mom of three. Mm -hmm. I am Honduran American. My parents migrated from Honduras here over 30 years ago. And I grew up in the Bronx. I grew up in Bronx, New York. I'm a New Yorker. And uh, the reason why I came up, I wrote this book, honestly, was because of the fact that there was no, not so many books out there about being Honduran, and there was not some, uh, there were no books actually about being Honduran American. And as a mother of three with children who are Dominican, who are Hispanic, they're Dominican and Honduran. Um, so many kids, uh, when they ask my children like, "Where you're from?" Um, like, Everyone knew, everyone knows Dominican Republic, but when it comes to Honduras, no one knows exactly where it is. And I remember one day my children coming home, <laughs> my, my children coming home one day and telling me, mom, like there's, you know, every time I let people know who I, where I'm from, where my parents are from, they immediately know where Dominican Republic is, but they don't know where Honduras is. Like, why is that? And it just brought back, honestly, memories when I was a child and I was in elementary school and how many children didn't know about Honduras. And I went to a very diverse school. I'm from the Bronx, New York. So as you know, it's so much diversity. There's Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, um, you know, African-Americans, Black, um, you know, Mexicans. So there's a variety of uh, uh, so much diversity. But the truth of the matter is, is that not a lot of people know about Honduras. So it brought back memories. And, you know, one day I just said, I am just going to take this leap and I'm just going to write this book, um, share my story and, you know, and share about being Honduran and how, how to embrace your culture and be proud of who you are. And, you know, and I wrote this book around the time, you know, um, around the time where, you know, the past president, and it was just so much going on. And I just felt like it was just so important to talk about, um, uh, about diversity and embracing your culture in a time where so many children feel that um, they will feel like not, 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 not like they fit in, if that makes sense. I definitely understand what you're saying. Um, and speaking of, and not too much, of the past president, um, <laughs> I definitely understand the need for this mm -hmm. type of, um, tool to be put into place and I hope it's not the last book yeah. that will be coming from author Osaria <laughs> definitely not <laughs> so quick question as a mother how did your children receive the book were they able to read it and understand it yeah so I am a mom of teenage girls I have uh, I have three children so I have two teenagers and I have a five-year-old and when in the process of writing this book um, I would read to them and a lot of the times I didn't want to because I kind of wanted also to surprise them and I was like you know just like the know mommy's writing a book but when they read the story and, and they were like mom I can so relate to this story mm -hmm. and I'll be honest Kelly a part of me was really scared to share this story you know because I was like oh my goodness like what's gonna happen you know who's gonna relate to it 
But hearing my children tell me how much they can relate to it, how much they can relate to the story and how many other kids could probably relate to it inspired me to keep moving, you know, motivated me actually to keep moving. Um, but when they read it, they, you know, they, we did cry all together because they're like, mommy's an author, but it, I still feel good. Even my five-year-old son, when he picks up the book and he goes, mommy, that's you. And that just alone is just that message of, you know, I did the right thing by writing this book and sharing the story. That is a beautiful thing. Um, Thank you. And you're welcome. It's amazing that you felt this need and that you put it out there and that it's been receptive. Um, mm -hmm. Just the business of it all, when, when getting the concept of a book that you, is it difficult going from a thought and idea into your finished product? <laughs> Yes, I really think it is. Um, it took me now. This process took eleven months. Now I've always thought about being an author, but I didn't know what was initially the pro the process of it, right? Because I didn't grow up with authors in my family. I'm the first right. author, you know, and I'm the first graduate in college. So congratulations, but, the thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you know, but the process alone. Um, to answer your question, you know, it's, 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 it's a process where, you know, you have to sit down, you have to write about it, and then you have feelings come up. And I think so many authors can relate. It's like writing in your journal, right? When you're just writing these feelings and emotions of what's coming on, or maybe you're writing your dreams and goals. And sometimes you have those moments where you just want to cry because you're like, is this possible? Can I make this come true? Um, so yeah, so it's an, it's, it's, I guess to answer the question, right, of, of the, the process, it's an amazing process to go through because it's, a, it's your own journey and only you can tell the story as best as you know how. Um, from, to go from idea to reality, it was intense, I have to say, because intense in the way that you start second guessing yourself Absolutely. and you, you know, and you wonder, can I do this? Can I make this happen? You know, no. you know, <laughs> you know, and I think everyone always goes through that self doubt when they're starting something new. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, when it's new to, I guess, to you, to, to what you, what you're used to doing in like career. Right. Because I was a receptionist. I'm a mom. I was a receptionist at the time. And, you know, this is prior to the pandemic. So when I launched the book, it was just so many emotions. Like, can I really accept that I'm an author now? Um, so all those things were coming up during this process from going from idea to reality. Congratulations on your finished product. Thank you. You're welcome. You was able to get an illustrator. She was able to get it published on different platforms. I think hands off, hats off to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, um, thank and you should definitely be celebrated. Um, audience, Thank you so much for tuning in. This is not an easy task, okay? Mm -hmm. Being a business person, being an author, you have to be both talent and management. It's not easy to come up with an idea and actually bring it to fruition. Those are goals that we set for ourselves and for others. And then we check them off and we feel that sense of achievement. Um, yeah. So it's important, whether it is write a book or clean your room or, <laughs> or you know, eat plant-based for a week, whatever it is that's your goal, it is absolutely obtainable. Yeah. Um, so I think this is just a very well, very good example of another person saying, I'm going to knock this out the park. My yes. better example, I'm able to do better. Um, what do you do with your availability? And, um, you know, when you're not so busy wearing all of your hats? Oh, yeah. I, I tell everyone, um, I'm a mom, motivational speaker, you know, author and business coach. But at the flip side of it, I would love to run an eat pizza. Not, <laughs> like, you know. I, you know, um, the days when I'm not working, I enjoy the time with my family. And I, I think now more than ever, as I see my kids growing up and like becoming teenagers and soon, you know, they're going to be going on their own. It's been so important for me and not even during this pandemic, how important it is to have that quality family time, how important it is to just spend time with my family. Right. Because I think with, we're so busy with work and 
trying to make ends meet, right? That we forget about family time. Um, so in the days when I'm not working, I am either running. You can find me running. I'm actually in the process of training for my fifth marathon. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I've been, yeah, I've been enjoying time with friends. That's been really important for me lately of uh, spending at least once, once or twice a month with just with friends, um, hanging out with them and, you know, my family, my mom, my dad. And yeah, just spending time with my family and friends. Also reading and reading. <laughs> Just in my mind also, people, but this yeah. is definitely needed. Um, I meet a lot of adults that say, mm -hmm. I don't have any friends. And mm -hmm. it's not the end of the world, but yeah. I've grown to know as one of those former folks <laughs> that um, friends are necessary. Um, yeah. and, and it's a great thing when you have that support system. Um, it's an even greater thing when you're like me, I used to hide out in my cave, my, you know, my mm -hmm. in the dark with Netflix. And so oh, <laughs> I get it. Okay. And now that we're in better days, it wasn't mm -hmm. just my friends that pulled me out, but I did find it healthier when I could have those social experiences. Um, and so when I try to reach out to clients, um, and um, I'm sorry, I say reach out to clients. What I should have said was I also speak, <laughs> I also <laughs> life coach. Um, so when I do reach out to clients, I want to make sure, hey, did you get out? Did you enjoy the fresh air? Did you come out of your house? Did you come out of that, that cloudy space? Yeah. You know, it's not just home, it's a comfort zone. <laughs> so did you get yeah. out there and experience a new day? Did you just enjoy the weather or how beautiful the clouds look or the nature? Or did you go downtown and have yourself a ball did you go people mm -hmm. watching did you do anything yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and you have to and, and, and for someone right because i'll be honest i struggled too for a really long time to find people who enjoy the same things as i did well and that's I think you know, I, you yeah, your yeah. hobbies you can try to yeah get, you exactly. hobby. everybody exactly. likes the same thing you like they all there with you <laughs> exactly exactly so it's like you it's like it's like what you said like find a hobby like you know think of three things that you love to do right whether it's running whether it's reading whether it's um you know whatever it is maybe it's dancing right and now things are opening up but find your type of tribe find those people and you can find those people like I, when it came to running I found so many amazing people who love to run and that alone expanded my friendships and that alone expanded like my, you know, my mental state, and it was just so great just to know that I'm going to meet my friends just to go run. And, you know, if you're someone that's like having that difficulty, really ask yourself, like, what are the two, three, th three things that I love to do and give it a try because you never know who you're going to meet and you never know where that really, that friendship can go, exactly. and I, you know, and how it could expand you and like, it can help you so much just to get out of your house, get out of your comfort zone. Okay. So let's go over the resume. You have how many yeah. initials behind your name? Let's count. <laughs> how many jobs do you have? Oh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, run the list. Run the list. I'm ready. One. Yeah. yeah. Um, mom. This is like mom. I'm wife <laughs> for 15 years. I'm a business coach, an empowerment, an empowerment business coach, um, an author, motivational speaker, a runner. Uh, I'll say pizza lover. Let's put that, let's do that eight. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And she still has time to come on this show. And before she did any of that, she was able to have an idea. Yeah. And she was able to manifest that into greater. I bet when you had these ideas, you had no resources, no money, no, no. wherewithal. Exactly. But yeah. it's still done. Eight. Yeah. Eight hats. Eight hats. Yeah. I was about to put up nine. Eight hats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm sure there's more that I'm forgetting, but you know, I, I go uh, just to, a little bit go back to what you said. Like I didn't have no resources and I didn't have no network. Like, you know, I, again, I come from a family where, you know, my mom, you know, my parents were paycheck to paycheck, you know what I mean? But I had to find that way. And I had this idea and I said, I'm going to make it come true. I have no idea how I'm going to figure it out, but I'm going to figure it out. And, um, you know, I, I started plugging in. I started doing my research. How can I start a book? How can I illustrate it? How can I publish it? And the same thing was with, you know, starting my brand and business. Like I, I grew my network, honestly, by just like getting myself out there and doing the thing that's uncomfortable, meeting different people. And yep. I think that's really important because 
I grew up in a home where we didn't have much. And for anyone out there, believe in yourself because it is possible for you to make an idea and turn into a reality. And you just never know what is what can happen, what is possible for you. I do have to say that. I agree with you 1000%. Um, every hat that I wear, it came from a conversation from above. Lord mm -hmm. God, I have no idea how I'm going to make money for these kids. I have no idea how I'm going to just, just get off my butt. I have yeah. no idea. I was an office working person and I prayed for that job. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know. I am so with you on that. Okay, I because pray. I, I've been there. I've been there. You know and as mean? soon as that job was gone, and you thought this is the end of the world, and it was only the beginning. Yes, yes. Mm. And you know, and I remember, I remember getting my first corporate job, and getting like you know, thinking it was like my dream life, and this is what I wanted to do. And I, you know, I had my babies. And I got laid off literally like less than a year. And, and I cried so hard. And I was about 19, 20 at the time, 20, 21. And I remember crying because I felt like my life was over, but I feel like life is just beginning because I just kept getting tested. But I feel like I was being directed to where I needed to be and not where I thought I needed to be. And sure enough, throughout these years, I've been getting led to, this is my purpose. This is what I am meant to do. I'm meant to help people and show people what is possible for them. You know, even a girl whose parents don't speak English, who didn't have a big network, but she's making it happen. Correct, correct, correct. And that's exactly what I like to tell all my listeners and watchers. People at the valley, at the bottom, where you mm -hmm. think you're at your lowest, that's your best place for creativity, your best yeah. place to try it out. What you got to lose? <laughs> How did that ain't going thing? How did that ain't going thing? So just pull out your talents that, that, that God mm -hmm. has given you and see where they can grow with prayer, with will, okay? Be yeah. willing, okay? <laughs> There's so much that can be accomplished. And I am a testament to that. Uh, Christine mm -hmm. is a testament meant to that <laughs> anyone else you see on my show we started from mm -hmm. nothing zero mm -hmm. okay and not just like I was on the street no no that no. was the case I had a home but I, I only had 30 days of home <laughs> so, okay <laughs> that's what oh, like, no food. Yeah. okay okay you can lose some of that stuff okay then, then we take care of our shelter at least okay and mm -hmm. we can 30 days at a time, unless you get your money together. So, yeah. so that's all of us, all right? <laughs> it's called a mortgage. And you yeah. wait on that mortgage and watch what type of letters they start sending you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it does come together. It does come together. It's not hopeless. It's, it's mm -hmm. not something to give up on. It's not something to think it will never work out. It's not something to say, oh, let me go buy this big piece of equipment and then I could be self-employed. That's the worst thing you could do. No. Yeah. So, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's the worst thing you could do for it yourself. Is. You can make $10 out of nothing. You can make $100 out of nothing. And exactly. you can throw that into more because then you'll start to get the resources, the network, the helpers, people that want to sow into you, especially exactly. if you're a profit. Oh, geez. The possibilities yeah. are endless. That's exactly. Exactly. And we all have a talent. I think we need to like really spread that out there. If you're listening, like we all have a talent. When you think that you don't, like you have a gift to share. And if you don't know, when exactly what Kelly said, nothing can happen. Nothing, there's not nothing's gonna happen. Uh, nothing wrong is gonna happen if you actually sat down and asked yourself, "What is it that I can do?" Because you'll be surprised at how many amazing things you have done already in your life, even through the obstacles. I'm sure Kelly could like, you know, get me like, you know, you we think that obstacles is like the worst thing, but we find so much within ourselves when we realize how strong and powerful we are just by going, just by um. What is it? Like making it happen, right? Going over the obstacles. I, I'm trying to find the word, but I, yeah. <laughs> we get you. <laughs> you know, so, I feel yeah. similar. Go for it. Finish. What were you going to yeah, say? Yeah, so no, like, you know, like we all have a talent and do not think that you don't. Do not think like, you know, it, 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 it's like, I, oh, I have nothing to give. Yes, you do. You have a story. You are here and you have a gift. And each and one of us have that gift. We have to just show it. And we have to stop being afraid to show up, mm. show up in this world, right? Um, exactly. Nothing is going to come easy, you know? Exactly. Well, that means like showing up on social media and just start sharing your story, share it because someone needs to hear it. And you you'd know, be surprised. I'm like, what yeah, about yeah. I can just act crazy on YouTube. <laughs> 
and get YouTube checks. I mean, making money, exactly. money, honey. I'm like, what they do? They went skateboarding. Exactly. How about you start learning <laughs> and move? <laughs> this, this generation <laughs> under me learned how to work that nothing out of something. Exactly. Get cell phones and get Jesus. <laughs> yeah, 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 and everything is literally in our hands. So it's like just sit down and really ask yourself like what is it that I like to do and start sharing it because people out there need to hear it like you know these stories that get that Kelly is sharing you know it's because we want to you know she wants to inspire you but more it's like she she wants to show you what is possible and I like again I'm, I'm a girl from the Bronx hello so you know what I mean people think so much so wrong about communities in the Bronx but believe it or not there's so many of us just putting it out there and just showing hey listen if I can do it you can do it too like don't second guess yourself okay I'm right there with you especially when I come up there and I hang out on Grand Concourse with my baby girl oh my god when you come you need to let me know (laughs) I've had a friend uh, we've been friends since I was 16 years old she lives in the Bronx really Mm -hmm. um that's awesome (laughs) when you definitely come you have to let me know I'm reaching out to all my guests hi hello (laughs) hey how you doing hi I'm here Waiting. Where's the food? I want all the food. Definitely. Oh yeah. <laughs> I eat seafood all day long in Maryland. So oh. Yeah. oh girl, we're gonna take you out. I'm with it. Always with yeah. it. <laughs> It's been such a pleasure having you here. It's so easy to talk to you um, and to learn more about uh, you and your projects. Please take a moment to let our watchers and listeners know how they can reach you, how they can reach your project, um, any platforms that you're on. This is your time to plug away. Yeah, definitely. You can find me on Instagram. It's Christine Osoria, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E-O-S-O-R-I-A. Just want to spell it out. Um, also on Facebook and my website is Um, Rosalia the Honduran American is available on Amazon and you can also grab it on my website. And, you know, you can always email me. You can always reach out to me. I am here to support. Um, you know, so if you ever, if anyone out there just wants, you know, just wants to send me an email, go ahead. I'm here to support as much as I can. And again, I do have an empowerment business program and, you know, as well as my book. So you can always like see what it is that I'm doing. And you can always find me on social media sharing something, my runs as well as everything else. Oh, that's nice. You're personable on your social media. That's really nice. Yeah, I am. <laughs> business, not just get my program and move on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bill is that connection, yeah. $9.99, you can get the set. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hello. <laughs> can, can, I need help. <laughs> How do I reach help people? Like, <laughs> Girl, I can live and do stuff all day. I, but thank you, thank you. I love it. I love it. I have to say it. <laughs> When things clear up, we would like to bring you in for the studio so you can, by then, I hope you have another book out that you want to promote. Um, but, you know, due to COVID, we want to keep everybody socially distanced and safe um, yes. if regulations are lifting. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But we would love to invite you back. Um, it's been such a pleasure to have you here. Um, thank, thank you so you. much for joining us, Christine. <laughs> thank you so much again. And I truly appreciate for being here. You are very welcome. And thank you everyone for joining us today. It is a blessing to have you here with us. And I want you to tune in each night that we air. Never forget to tap back into your unspeakable joy. Have a wonderful day.